I didn't see the fourth one in theaters. I may have seen it on DVD a bit afterwards. I don't know. It, it, it made basically no impression to me. You missed out on us, all of, all of us holding hands and crying, but um, yeah, no. <laughs> Was it was it like okay? You saw it, I'm sure in theaters, 2008. Yes. I'm sure pretty excited and what have you. What, what was the what was the vibe exiting the theater? Uh, well, we'd 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 already gone through our 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 oh the prequel the Star Wars prequels thing. So I think we understood disappointment, uh, cinematic disappointment that that it wasn't going to be like it like it was when we were kids. Um, yeah, I mean it was pretty. I don't know, not great uh yeah i was pretty mad honestly um i you know i think i think there's always been some silliness in these movies and i feel like aliens was a bridge too far weirdly time travel worked better for me than than aliens interdimensional beings or whatever oh yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as lucas said but i mean they looked exactly like aliens and there's a whole thing with the crystal skulls and i don't know yeah uh yeah honestly Crystal Skull was, it's tough because the first half of that movie is really, really good. Like I really liked um, a lot. I, I, on repeat viewings, I've come to appreciate that more. The whole greaser thing, a, I was like, oh, I'm not sure I'm loving this. Um, I have come, I've come to enjoy it more. Um, um, and, it, and it does have kind of like a, you know, a little bit of the, uh, um, um, you know, Lucas, driving cars thing and that that sequence the, the through the college on the motorcycle chase like that's great that's terrific stuff but yeah then i you know the movie i i i, I don't know the, the the nuking the fridge thing okay it's silly whatever but um yeah i feel like like if i had to say which was the better half of that movie i would say it was definitely the front half of that movie um because yeah i i Okay, let's see. I so I, I saw it as a kid. I don't like it made no impression. Also, I was hiding the entire time because I was scared of the <laughs> aliens and shit. Um, the rewatch in like tw I think in twenty sixteen I watched I, every Spielberg movie, and mm -hmm. when I rewatched it then I remember being like, it's not so bad. It's not really good, but it's not that bad. And the rewatch this time was basically kind of in the same area, except I I liked it most things a little bit more. And I don't feel like it's in the prequel. I, I mean, I understand the comparison because it's the, you know, long distance between the last sequel and it's definitely a big step down from even the weakest of the original movies. Um, but I, I think it's definitely a better movie than the prequel. I mean, I guess it depends. I don't know where you sit on like Revenge of the Sith. Are you like Revenge of the Sith is good camp? Because a lot of people have been coming around to that. Uh, I think Revenge of the Sith is the best of the prequels easily. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. It's I wasn't ready to talk about Star Wars, but oh, dude, no, I'm just I'm just asking just for like I, just as a comparison in terms of how much you like this because yeah yeah uh, uh, I think I enjoy Crystal Skull the the. the the thing with Crystal Skull for me is that the the stuff that I didn't like really outweighs the stuff that I like, and that usually, as I will watch a movie more and more, the stuff that bothers me, I'll just ignore those bits and and just enjoy the stuff that that I like. Um, yeah, um, I think part of it, part of my initial reaction to it was, you know, it's Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett's, if you ask me, like one of the best actors in existence. Um, and just, this film is evidence of that. Incredible, incredible actress. Um, and and then this movie is just so dumb. Um, I, I, you know, like I don't. I was re I was ready for for getting my Ricardo Montalban in my in my uh, Indiana Jones movie, and and it's just kind of, yeah. I didn't buy her motivation. I, you know, there wasn't really a good antagonist motivation that that pulled me through the movie where it's like oh she's scary because she's you know really smart and she wants this thing um and yeah yeah her motivation is she wants to know what does she want to know i don't know but yeah. Every, <laughs> i don't know everything i want to know everything i want to know everything i i yeah. you know honestly i i enjoy seeing an actress of her caliber goofing yeah. around like that like i i don't know if i have a ton of things i 
dislike about the movie, I just think that for me, the highs are not as high for one thing as the originals. He's just a little bit off his game in terms of, well, for one thing, I think he didn't really want to make the, every interview with Spielberg. It kind of sounds like he was just like doing a little thing to get back together with his pals, but he's not super enthusiastic about it. And he's sort of, yeah. And we, we talked about the lighting thing and it's just sort of feeling like a little bit visually off. Um, but I think for the most part, I en- like I enjoy it. To me, Kate Blanchett being silly, it's like fun. Shia LaBeouf, he's, I think he's he's good enough. I think he's he's a nice foil for Ford. I'm not gonna again, like he's not high on my you know power rankings of Indiana Jones characters, but I do like that whole part where they're they're you know father son grave robbing. I think it's a pretty fun scene, and and I, I, there's some fun kind of you know. Uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf being the fish out of water in this situation and being freaked out by skeletons and what have you. I think it's, I think it, it's pretty, it's pretty solid. I really yeah. like, oh, what, what's that? No, no. I mean, I like him in the first scene when they figure out that he's his son from that point. I don't know. It just kind of deflated it for me, I guess. Um, and then, the, I'm sorry, it's this, it's the uh, quicksand scene with the, yeah, don't what come on. That's just terrible. The yeah. Oh, it's a snake. He's good. He doesn't like snakes. Uh, okay. Okay. We're gonna I guess we're gonna do this now. Because one that that part of the that was that whole section of the movie when Marion comes back, that was like my favorite part of the movie. That was where I, I went from being like, this is eh, okay, to I was like, this this rocks. Maybe this is actually a great movie. Cause I I thought first of all just the having her back and the the dynamic between the three of them and and indy realizing it's his son to me it was very funny and the thing where they're in the quicksand it's so dumb it's so silly also it kind of looks like it's like a a sound stage yeah. or something like for whatever reason it looks kind of bad but it's like Island. it's like a gilligan's island set i, I yeah and then, <laughs> and then john hurt is there so like yeah you have two incredible incredible actors and then you put in this very very silly i don't know yeah i you you're okay with that somehow well okay. here's this is the, this is the argument it this is a mick lasalle argument which i honestly i support this even though i think his mm-hmm. takes are sometimes wrong but mick when he reviews a comedy he says if this made me laugh i don't care how stupid it is it must be good and when that scene happened it made me laugh like for a long time the entire mm-hmm. thing with the snake it was so silly but it was very funny to me so to me in my estimation i don't know it it worked okay and honestly the same with thing with the swinging on the vines so silly looks ridiculous that, yeah getting back to my whole like storyboarding thing a part of it also is that he didn't have to put that up on a board and to have somebody go absolutely not no we're not doing that um it just feel like he was just kind of like, yeah, good enough, whatever, you know, but I, I want to laugh with the movie. That stuff makes me laugh at the movie uh, in, 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 in a bad way. I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm laughing with it because it's, okay. I don't feel like I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like he knows it's funny. Just like the thing with the fridge, like the thing with the fridge. It's not like Spielberg actually thought a guy could survive in a fridge from a nuclear blast. He did it because it's silly yeah. and he's just yeah. having a, he's having a laugh. And honestly, I don't know if that was as funny as it was when I watched it the previous time. And I, I think while it's a funny gag, like it's just so silly, it, it, it works for me. I do. The one thing I sort of am a little mixed on is just the fact that it's, it's so invulnerable. And as we were talking about with, with Indy, it's like part of what's great, great about him as a character is vulnerability and he can be hurt. So it hurts that a little bit by having something so ridiculous uh, happen. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed the whole the, the whole seg- section. And again, the thing where they're chasing through the forest, it's it doesn't look great, but it has kind of that feeling of, I mean, because I, I, I don't know if you are a big like, like uh, Adventures of Tintin, or I even kind of like Ready Player One or parts of it. Um, but the whole, <laughs> Bert's scrunching his face. Um, the I kind of enjoyed the digital Spielberg um, where he's sort of playing with that toolbox and, and saying like, I can do sort of anything and have this, this huge sequence that'll play out with these huge long takes 
And um, I don't know. I just I think that scene really, and they're jumping from each car, and he's they're having a sword fight. I I to me that was that was great. Kurt's shaking his head. No, not not no. for you. No, that that whole that that's where the movie came off the the rails for me. It was just yeah, it, okay. it. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like at that point, it was just like, what are you guys doing? Um, because it didn't feel real. I mean, that, that, that's the thing with the with the when we were talking earlier about the you know there's a there's a real guy who who slid under that truck and he gets dragged behind the truck and you yes. see it happen and it's this like trip. that's that's terrible that's that's like scary but cool that 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 this is real and that stuff was just like this is so fake and felt fake and looked fake I don't know yeah yeah it's I, yeah it's a weird thing it's a weird thing for me where I'm like I agree with everything you're saying that a it's way cooler to see it really happen and b it kind of doesn't look very good but i don't know it's like it's like the whole this whole mix thing where it's like i enjoyed i enjoyed it it was fun and it worked for me and and for most of the movie i sort of had that had that feeling um i just i think for me honestly the the, the thing that hurts it the most is the ending and it's not even how silly it is though i you know as far as the the miracles or big finales that occur in these movies, it's definitely the worst one. But I, I think what, what really is is the problem is after they go in the waterfall, even that was making me laugh when she went in the waterfall and she's like, no, 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 trust me. She goes over the thing and the, the tree goes back and s smacks the Russians off the cliff again. Like that was pretty, pretty funny gag. It, it's it's cartoony, but that that bit worked for me. The 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 uh, like, there's a name for that kind of boat duck. I think it's a yeah duck, yeah right? the duck boat yeah yeah yeah. That, and they keep going um, over the, the the cliffs and again. It's that, that was, that, it was funny going going over like I think it's just this waterfall. I think it's an, and then it, yeah like more and more, and then a really big one. Um, but yeah, I, 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 it, it was through the forests, really, where where they're having a sword fight between the things, and I don't know. I I rewatched it, and it was like there are parts of it that worked, but you know, overall, it just felt so fake. And then I don't know, the whole ants thing was just like ants thing. I don't know. It's it's kind of good. Again, it's like the, the having it just about the CGI ants, not not as cool looking. Um, also, just deeply disturbing to me because that's like that's so horrifying when they when the, yeah, the colonel yeah, gets sure. it i mean like indiana jones and you need those bugs right uh uh like the snakes and the bugs in the temple of doom which are creepy crawlies you need that yeah in your in your check that box but to me it was like oh, okay uh, all right i'm checking the box okay you got it but it didn't i don't know it just didn't move me it didn't do anything for me it didn't it didn't have the spielberg little moments and little stories that i think uh, i don't know have have, have um enhanced the, the flavors of some of those uh, moments in, in other movies like him i i don't know i, well, I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was but no no i think yeah. well, i think that that might be true but also more more so than that the key thing that is just weak about the the finale especially after that sequence um the chase and what have you is just that even though it's kind of fun and I like the part where they're knocking the sand, that reminds me of like Survivor or whatever. It's, you know, it's kind of fun going through the temple. Um, what's just speaking of racist, sorry, I'm just going to bring this up. Like, If you're going to talk about that moment, there's a bunch of natives that are just, they're fighting them. I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like that either because it's like this weird, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's, what, what, what to me the problem is is more on a character level just in terms of like what was so fun to me was seeing the dynamic between oh my god this is my son you have to go back to school this whole thing between the three of them and it feels like that sort of falls out of the movie completely as it's coming to the end and it is really the only movie all he really has to do in the end of that movie is kind of oh we just need to run away from the the uh, the spiraling um, crystal skeletons or whatever as as Kate Blanchett is going nuts. No, I I I mean that's 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 it. Is it you don't have, uh, you know, a pious man, uh, uh, you know, has to duck down. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, 
yeah you have it's the thematic. word of god yeah okay. leap of faith all that stuff no it's you know it's it's a good comparison because in that in both cases it's like you, the characters are traversing into you know the central MacGuffin location but in one it's deeply connected to him he's saving his father it's like the stakes couldn't be higher and also he's making these decisions like himself um and in in this one it's kind of um I don't know. It just kind of becomes sort of passive, and then that end when he's, you know, this thing is taking off. It's like, oh, it's kind of, a, you know, whatever. It's it's a spectacular spectacle visual, but it's only when they get back to the the, the last kind of five minutes of the movie, we're like, oh, here's the charm that I was enjoying earlier. And I actually, I do really like the last scene at the wedding. I think that is nice. And I think that's good. I, I I liked I liked how that left off, and I liked how that tied into the new movie too. Uh, uh, oh, sure, yeah their whole their whole dynamic i thought that was that was that was good uh i mean Mar marion and indy chemistry together that's good stuff the end of that movie is with cgi blurs and you know pu puzzles that don't really contribute anything thematically to the story or, and and yeah you know like you said i i mean i guess i didn't really i tuned out by that point but they completely dropped like it would have been fun if indy was like this is why you go to college or whatever because he's he figured out that you know the displacement of something was better honestly yeah. even though that that would be so dumb like sure like why not at least it would add a little bit more and it kind of feels almost like marion and mutt have kind of nothing to do and also like the, it kind of ends up focusing more on the matt character who i and i think is another thing that just doesn't quite work in the movie like i love ray winston he's a great actor but it doesn't i don't know did you, you felt the same way he's kind of not no, no, you're you're bringing up another great actor that was sort of wasted in that movie uh, for me. Anyway, that 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 was like I was really looking forward to because I really felt like there was something there. There was something really cool because you know it's a little bit of a shady reflection of, or or might have, may have been or was a double cross and wasn't a double cross, a triple cross. I don't. That that was funny that they kind of said those words, but it wasn't. I don't know. It didn't quite work. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's um. On balance, I would say pretty enjoy. I mean, if I watch a movie where, you know, 85% of it, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty fun. And then there's mm. just a little bit, you know, maybe a 10, 15 minute portion that's kind of, you know, boring CGI slop. I'm I'm still going to call that a victory or a, a modest victory in my mind. But it's 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 definitely I think it's definitely the weakest um, because, I mean, he gets, you know, it's, he's always has a great like moment of like. Even in the first one, which I'm kind of, kind of nagging a little bit, the the him being tied up. At least he gets to do the like close your eyes, mate. There's a definitive. India yeah. has a moment. He makes a decision. He makes a decision yeah. to cut the bridge. I'm going to cut the bridge. You know, yeah. I'm going to make the leap of faith. Um, and I thought in the new movie, which we'll get to, and we're going to spoil the new movie, by the way. Um, I thought there was great character stuff in the spectacle. Spoilers. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't really. Well, I'll, I'll make sure to put it in the description. We're, we're spoiling all of these movies. I don't know. I don't think it be, deserves to be his worst movie. Like, I'll, I think it might be his lowest rated movie on at least Letterboxd or maybe even on IMDb. And um, I don't know. It's eh, to me, it's pretty enjoyable. I mean, I, I, I haven't revisited 1941 or Hook or uh, Always, but I can't imagine that it's, it's worse than those movies. Um, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's. So I think part of it is that you say that if a movie is 85% of stuff that you enjoy in a movie, you like that, you know, you consider that a success. I think for me, when there's a movie that or in particular has a franchise where I've seen it really work and then it super doesn't work, that gets graded more harshly or something for me. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, you know, the prequels being a, a formative example of that where it's just, you know, it's like, no, but those movies are really good and this not um this but the very true no no so so crystal skull for me has moments in it where i'm like oh this is great this is this is this is my old indie i'm getting i'm getting those flavors of indie that i really like and then by at the end of the movie for you know the most important portion of the movie the, the bit that has to work you're right it doesn't make it doesn't really make a decision they kind of fumble through a puzzle that isn't really a puzzle i don't know and then john hurt has all gone through all this before or yeah, yeah. He, he gets better all of a sudden yeah it's just it's just it's yeah, yeah. And, uh, the statues have all gone back to where they were I, I mean i don't yeah there's a bunch of stuff that's i mean there's always goofy stuff in these movies but uh, yeah for for whatever reason 
the end of that movie just just left me very i mean not 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 the mary and indy mary are married and mutts they're all a big happy family thing i like that i think it's not that that upsets me and i you know i like mutt fine i i i I don't know. I, I I wouldn't say that I like Mutt, but I, yeah, I was not. I was less upset this time than it was shy. Um, this most recent viewing, um, I think I was more upset about that before. But but it was he was fine. Yeah, uh, Marion's great. Um, Karen but, Allen yeah. just as good as the first movie. Honestly, I thought she was so charming in, in the fourth one, also. And I like the ending. Some people don't like the whole thing with the hat at the end because to them it it seemed like they were trying to pass the mantle. But to me, like I read it the complete opposite, which is that like, no one is taking this ever and it, it will never not be Harrison Ford. I'm just glad they cut out the bit where the, the rat crawls across the balcony at the end. Cause I thought that, <laughs> no, it was too much. The hat was... <laughs> yeah, no, thematically it was a little, yeah. The, 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 we got the symbolism without it for sure. <laughs> if anyone understands what that's referenced, some people will. Um, but yeah, yeah, speaking of the whole idea, I mean, the, of fan reaction to stuff and, and and expectations, I really think that's been a big reason this new movie has been, the response to it has been so, I would say mostly mixed from most people I've, um, I mean, not, the, I mean, the, my mom and dad love them. Like people I saw it with liked it. Um, the people who have seen it seem to have liked it. Uh, 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 I, I don't think it's a perfect movie at all, uh, uh, but I do I do think that people who see it tend to like it i did see a lot of hate about it online or whatever but it, i don't know i felt like yeah i mean there's a lot of hate also coming from people who have not like there are all these like completely bogus rumors that came up about this movie that were you know the the, the, the there were tons of reshoots and whatever and i have a hard time other than just the fact that james mangold said that did not happen like we shot one version but just on a practical level i don't Think that was really possible given the scale of the ending of the movie it doesn't really make sense they could reshoot that as oh they actually went to 1939 or whatever um so i don't i don't buy that not to mention just i to me what was surprising about it on top of just i walked in going i hope this is watchable honestly like i just from what i had heard i was like i hope i don't hate it and then no. not only was it surprising that i liked it so much but it was surprising that um just given the way a lot of um modern sequels are it was not a big uh reference fest it wasn't like a ton of things you know it was not like a, some of these star wars movies even ones i liked honestly where it's like a little bit too much um, not not i mean there was a little bit of that but not yeah just enough yeah. sala shows up and and you know the of course the end of the movie but but that's but again it's like those things even sala i think it's up, weird that they got married i feel like it's weird at the end of this movie that sala and indy got married <laughs> Oh no! Now we're spreading misinformation. Yeah, um, no, I, that's been my favorite thing is to troll people who come at me with with these <laughs> weird rooms. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because they're always like, it's like, oh yeah, they they made Indiana Jones woke, and it's like, oh, I'm okay. He had a female like buddy in the movie, like like the other movies. It just it doesn't it doesn't seem like that at all. It's like James Mangold is not some. Uh, he, he's not some guy who's like i want to make a movie that's like, like pushing some agenda or like whatever he's he's like a classical old time he calls movies pictures in interviews he's like an old timey wow. like michael curtis like great journeyman filmmaker yeah and yeah. i think honestly it's pretty it's a pretty amazing thing that he he made a movie that's so kind of without all these trappings uh, you know and, and and actually has a coherent point that's why i don't think this research makes sense because everything in the movie is building to that ending at least that's how i felt watching it and it, whatever the cynical reasons or whatever you know if, if the movie you know is just it, even if the movie was made for cynical reasons it he found a genuine reason in making it and it and it doesn't feel that way when you watch it and it doesn't feel the, the work harrison ford is giving it doesn't feel like a guy who's just you know phoning and oh i gotta do it again you know it feels to me, like some of the most touching, beautiful work he's done um, in a career of, you know, a lot of these kind of things. And honestly, I, I uh, as much as I might complain about legacy sequels and all this, whatever, you know, that's happened in the last 10 years, I feel like all three of these Harrison Ford movies, Force Awakens, Blade Runner 2049, and, and Indiana Jones have been, again, if whatever the reason they're being made, Harrison Ford, the work he's doing in these has been incredibly touching to me. And he's, 
I feel like there was a period where he was getting a little bit like lazy. Then you can even see it in some parts of at Crystal Skull, like the whole like part time that whole thing, where it feels like he's a little bit you know yeah. uh, maybe yeah. phoning it in or you know just just not super into it. But he he's to me is giving it his all um, as as an actor. I mean, obviously he's not doing all the stunts and everything because he's eighty years old, but. Um, I thought it was I thought it was quite beautiful, and I think really the only thing about the movie for people who have seen it, I, I think it, it just it suffers only by comparison, only by the fact that James Mangold can't reach the level because no one can. Oh, no, there's like maybe two people on Earth who are as good as Steven Spielberg, or even come close to being as good as him um, in terms of filming action sequences. But to me, the distance between Steven Spielberg and bad is a quite a huge spectrum and i think mangled falls pretty high on the spectrum if you watch logan and ford v ferrari this is a great action film even some of the stuff I, in the I, first I, 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 yeah so i went in with with actually pretty pretty higher expectations frankly i think part of it was that i so was, yeah maybe this is something to talk about when you rewatched, did you just watch in release order the 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 uh uh, no, you know what I actually did is I watched I watched one, two, and four, and I think that okay. was smart because I watched four before the new one, so I didn't and I left Crusade till after because I was like it's so good. It was also yeah. like if the new one sucks, I can like chase it down with like a five star classic. Um, I just did that with Mission Impossible. It's a great way to do it. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not moving. No, um, it's fine. Whatever. No, uh, uh, I I watched it in a weird order. I watched. Uh, Temple of Doom first, so I guess that's uh, you know accidentally chronologically or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like like I wasn't intentionally trying to do that, but I the reason why I wanted to do that was because I wanted to watch Raiders after because I knew I'd feel good watching. Like if I start with the 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 bad you know get through the the vegetables, I can have my dessert you know with with Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was great, uh, and that was a good way to do it, I guess, because I think it made me appreciate Temple of Doom a little bit more because if you just watch Raiders and then you watch Temple of Doom, it's like boy that first movie was really really good um, yeah. um whereas you do it the other way around and it's yeah i don't know i was able to appreciate uh, temple even more I, I, like i said yeah like, as i watched it more uh, and so and then i watched crystal skull because i knew that was a dog and it would be a slog and rewarded myself with watching uh, last crusade so that was great but i do think it set my expectations real high because yeah there was, i mean i just watched three really good movies and and half of a reasonably okay movie yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so you you went in pretty hyped from yeah these. yeah yeah I, I i i do think it's 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 beneficial to go in with low expectations and i mean that's helped things like i enjoyed controversially i enjoyed the flash uh, uh like it was fine i'm not saying it was a good movie but i just like it was i didn't come out of there going oh dc makes the worst movies ever it was like no nah, you know, like that was silly and there was a bunch of goofy stuff, but but I was fine because I went in with such low expectations. No, but but I went in with pretty high expectations because Logan is like peak comic book. I, I, I don't know. That might be the best comic book movie, but I, you have to have you have to know the X-Men. Um, it might, it might be that. outside of Dark Knight or at least the Dark Knight trilogy for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I loved Lo Logan was Logan was had the trailer for Logan was so good that I watched eight movies so I could see Logan. Cause I had never seen any of those ex except maybe Days of Future Past. Other than that, I hadn't seen any of those movies. Wow. So I was like, yeah. oh fuck, this like Johnny Cash and the Hurt. I was like, oh man, I, I gotta see this thing. And I just blitzed yeah. through the, and I think that's honestly, I think says a lot about how, you know, the way you go into these movies because it's not a one-to-one -one comparison with Logan, but I think Dial Destiny definitely. There's some overlap in terms of like the older hero who feels out of time, and and um, just that you know, obviously, and James Mangold's sort of style of filmmaking that's very kind of you know inspired by westerns and old movies. But one is going up against three great Spielberg movies, and maybe okay one, and the other is like Brian Singer, who's like solid he's like okay some of those those x-men movies are pretty good some of them are quite good actually but yeah it's not on the same level and people are not going in with the same sort of expectations i think yeah i i guess i was very pleasantly surprised that logan was as amazing as it was because yeah i'd seen that trailer and was like oh crap that's a lot to live up to and i feel like it 
more or less. There was some goofy stuff, but um, I liked it. And, and uh, it had that guy. I got, at some point, I'm going to learn his name, but the um, not the really big guy, but the the, the oh, cyborg. Boyd. Boyd Holbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He yeah. kind of plays and, the same character. He's like the enforcer of bad guy in both in yeah. Logan and Dial Destiny. He's really good. I like him a lot, actually. Yeah, I, I, and I was worried that it's like, oh, okay, here we go. His, his Greg Grunberg is is uh, uh, going to be up there chewing up the scenery again. But but I enjoyed it. It was like it was tone perfect for this. Yeah, yeah. So so the, the, did you? Were you? How did you feel when when it opens with that? Because that's a long Indiana Jones cold open that that train thing. So people talk about the train thing. Yeah. And Dial of Death, the, 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 the train thing doesn't happen until, what is it? Like, it's a good eight minutes, 11 minutes into the movie. There's a lot of movie that happens before we get to the train. But the train is really, I, I, first of all, I was like, okay, we're going to get about five minutes of D.H. Harrison Ford in, in you know, like, like I, I, th- th- I guess that was my expectation, and I was like, "Oh wow, this looks really good." There, there's a point where they swing the, there's an interrogation, and they swing a the light onto his face, and I was like, "That's pretty good. That looks pretty convincing. I'm pretty impressed with how that turned out." Um, um, but then that sequence just went on for a really long time. I felt like, I don't know, um, I, I have a thing that has to do with the end of the movie. So maybe I'll bring it up later, but, but about that intro sequence um, and, and the switch switching of MacGuffins for that. So, um, but I thought it was fine. I thought it was cool, but I did feel like it maybe overstayed its welcome a little bit. Um, I had a really odd, um, I've seen the movie twice and very odd experience, the, the contrasting between the two times, because I think, and this reminds me of I, I had this experience when, oddly when I saw the Mule, the Clint Eastwood movie, where mm. I went in with their very mixed reviews, and I just went in going like, I hope my guy doesn't blow it, you know. And I and honestly, I, like I'm not like mangled on the Clint level, but like mangled, I do consider one of my guys. Like I to me, Ford v Ferrari is like one of my favorite movies of the Good last movie. ten years, and and Logan as well. Um, so I was honestly, I was more excited. I don't need another Indiana Jones movie. If I mean, I'm, I'm since it was so good, I'm glad I got it. But I don't. I would have been fine without it. But I, I was more excited at, in seeing it as a James Mangold movie. So seeing it and then it being, you know, this sort of a franchise movie and a Disney movie, it got me worried when I'm watching. It got me nervous watching it. And I think it was just I was in my head so much watching parts of this. That I'm like, oh hmm. God, is he blowing? Is it, it's going on a little bit too long? And some of the CGI in the train doesn't look great. It's also they're doing the CGI at night thing, which I'm not crazy about. Um, and certainly when you watch Mission Impossible, yeah, the train stuff looks a lot better. But it's weird. It's like when you see it again and you know what you're kind of getting into and you know that the movie has a purpose and it's coherent and it's in its he's not making just like a cynical like oh, we're just doing it again. I thought it was actually pretty fun and it was not, you know, it, it, it's the the bad there's some bad looking individual shots but for the most part it actually is, looks really good like the movie looks really nice and that you know those him like sneaking through the train and you know the lights coming through there and you know and the gun spinning around there's like so there's fun stuff in there for sure um and again it's like yes if you, if spielberg directed this there probably would be even more awesome stuff and he would have done other stuff but i think it's still very very good and there's and and there are like fun gags and you know, where they he's hanging off the the you know by, by the neck and the, the statue comes down and he has to wear the outfit and he you know they see the bullet hole through it. It's a lot of fun sort of classic stuff. And and that was the other thing I kind of worried about is like are we kind of just retreading the same territory of young Indiana Jones? Um, but I enjoyed it a lot the second time. But first time, I was like worried, and I was like I don't know. And it was only when we get into 1969. And Harrison Ford wakes up and <laughs> to the sound of magical mystery to her, just enraged yes. in a feeling yes. I can relate to, by the way, having lived in a in a dorm with a fraternity, grabs his baseball bat, he yells at these kids to turn their music down. I was in just heaven watching this. And it it, it was probably the most I've gone from a movie of being like, I don't know about this, to this, this, I'm enjoying this a lot. And I yeah. thought him and that's the other thing is like him being a young guy I, I was a little bit like 
in a way for me, I'm here to see old grumpy Harrison Ford. I've seen Harrison Ford as a youthful fellow. It doesn't matter how good the CGI of his de-aging is. It's fun for me seeing him as an old guy. And I thought it was, it became like this, you don't really realize how important that opening and seeing him in that environment of 1969 and, you know, with the space race and he's on the subway and people are in, you know, costumes and there's yeah. anti-war protests and he's also the, the college, his classroom scene is a great contrast to the first movie because in the first one, everyone's rapt attention to the girls closing her eyes. It says, love you. And then now in this one, everyone's just falling asleep. Yeah, no, that was nice. And, and yeah, I liked that stark contrast that, that jarring, like, Oh yeah, we're going to, we're going to see him wake up. And, and uh, I don't know. I, I didn't, during the train sequence, I honestly, there's a little bit of a little part of my head that just kind of went off to filmmaker land that was like, I guess they have to map somebody's face onto him. And it doesn't have to be old Harrison Ford's face. It could be a young virtual because you're just going to map this asset onto there and do this 3D. Th- and and yeah. yeah, so I stopped, I stopped paying attention to them. <laughs> you're just in the in the in the uh, the tech and, and uh, filmmaking world of things. Um, exactly. But I thought I thought once he they bring in a uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge, I I was just surprised how much I was enjoying it. I, I don't know if I've really seen her in anything other than playing that kind of irksome robot in Solo, a Star Wars story. I've never seen Fleabag. I don't really. She's not a, like an actor who's really meant anything to me. She was great in Fleabag. That, that was that was my introduction, and everyone was like, "You have to see this. You're going to fall in love with her." And I'm like. Sure, I am, and I did. Yeah. No, I, so. I I'll probably watch it now because I think I think I thought she was great. And in terms of just like Indy and his partner in a movie, like buddy relationships, I, I would honestly put them up there with. I mean, obviously below him and Connery, but I, I I'd say it's as enjoyable as watching him in Short Round or him and Marion. Um, I think it's a nice contrast. And again, when you see it, the movie again, and you think about it in terms of him being out of touch with the time and being kind of alienated from not just the you know the way the world is but also like how people are and how like old guy looking at the young generation and going like this is the next generation of people she's a great embodiment of that because she's very charming and and to me very likable and 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 fun in the movie but refreshingly cynical and refreshingly kind of doing things for kind of mercenary interests and him the way he sort of looks at her character i think it becomes integral to how he looks at the world and how he looks at things when it comes to the end of the movie. And he's like, I don't even really want to be in this, you know, modern world anymore. Um, so I thought that was great. And I, and I really enjoyed the whole him on the horse. That whole sequence was, was sort of fun. It felt like a, like a nineties movie a little bit like, uh, I don't know, it's giving me like fugitive flashbacks. I think they have a scene at a parade. Yeah. That. Totally, totally, yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, that was, that was great. I honestly thought that the whole thing in, in, like Tangier, the the whole um, the auction thing was that was like a, re- a really fun sequence, and then and then the car chase was great. It was like him turning on the Ford V Ferrari, kind of um, flexing those <laughs> muscles again. You know, like I thought well, I thought it was really well done. Yeah. Again, it's like yeah, okay, it's not as good as whatever the the arc chase. And I think one one thing that the movie has as a limitation is just like Harrison Ford can't do amazing he can't crawl under the thing anymore and i think it, yeah. i'm glad they didn't try to do stuff like that because yeah same same yeah it would be silly as seeing an old guy an 80 year old guy doing well, that I think just... I've... so so i was gonna say one of the one of the concerns that everyone had or one of the i don't know that maybe not everyone had but that that i read was that phoebe waller bridge was just going to replace him and that you know they were uh, it was just going to be him kind of doddering around in the background while she did all the action and stuff like that. But I feel like, you know, maybe, uh, you know uh, and the movie isn't definitely not that, but I do feel like one of the things that we got was that she was a little bit of a reflection of him in terms of like a much younger version of his cynical, you know, been around the block a few times. So maybe doesn't have the same experience as him, but, and, and maybe isn't as quite as altruistic as he was, but maybe young Indiana was, a little bit like that. Yeah. You no, know, that's it, it's, it's that's a good point because he he makes he's, and, and it's funny because that's that is a, that is honestly very true to like how, and I, I'm not even just saying like people older than me, even just the way I look at people who are like kids nowadays, where I'm like, oh my god, kids nowadays they're all they're like this and they act like that, but it's actually like they're oftentimes 
just kind of doing the same thing you did, but like in just a slightly different way, or it's like there's something about the way they're oh, doing, annoying, isn't it? Nah, yeah, or the no. way they're carrying, even just the way they carry themselves that that is yeah. alienating. But you know, she's like being like, "Hey, weren't you like grave robbing and doing all this stuff?" He's like, "No, I was doing that. I had a good reason to do that." And I thought that was a, sort of a nice part of the movie that that she became. It, it didn't. It was not like him being sidelined, but it also gave the movie the opportunity to have like she got to do some of the big stunts and big kind of like yeah. crazier things like like jumping on the plane at the end which an 80 year old would be like absurd to, to see that happen um but for her it, it makes sense and it, it works for her character because she's yeah. going from being this kind of person who's doing things for self-interest to then doing these sort of like great acts of heroism at the end of the movie so to me that i don't know it that really it really worked and 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 it, again, it had that last crusade thing where when the action stopped and when they're just having downtime and they're fixing the car, it was in, really enjoyable. And, and the, the yeah. writing between them, I, I thought was just, it was like a great hang, you know? And Yeah, yeah. Good vibes. Good vibes in this one. And it, yeah. Uh, We're uh, I was, I was, people, people are uh, comparing this movie unfavorably to Crystal Skull. And, and, and I'll go back to the for a scene which apparently worked for you but for me that was that was just like i i, I totally tuned out it was just they were, it became a silly cartoon um in a way that i wasn't enjoying in, in crystal skull in this movie there was no sequence like that where it was just like i don't i, I don't understand what's happening and i don't believe any of this um if anything it was, i mean there was stuff that was like maybe a little because the whole they go into water with the Antonio Banderas on the boat thing, um, which is weird. It's the Antonio Banderas. Uh, people were always, I, I was like, maybe it's going to be short round. It's going to be the guy with the boat. Um, oh, that oh. been, um, but but no, uh, but I mean, they, they go in this underwater sequence, and it's not. It is kind of anticlimactic. It's cool because we haven't really seen Indiana Jones underwater, but um, but I thought that was neat that the, that 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 they that they did that. But there wasn't like some big. Over yeah. the top CGI swirl, and there's a whirlpool that comes down and takes out. You know, it's just like, yeah, no, was, yeah. yeah, no, it's almost to the point that it, it's like it could have used a little bit more, yeah. maybe even more craziness, honestly. Because, like, that scene, I, I think, is is like pretty solid and it works. There's there are things in it that I think work more as ideas than completely in execution, especially I think the eels, which when they introduced that at the beginning and they're like, the eels look like snakes. I just started laughing because I was like, oh my God, they're going to do the snakes thing again. And just, I think honestly- It was like, here comes that fucking quicksand scene for me. And, and it didn't happen. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, I guess you you felt relief. I was disappointed. But I think honestly, it, the only reason for that is just Harrison Ford. It just doesn't work when you can't really see Harrison Ford's face um, yeah. and his being terrified. Like that's smart of what's so funny about it. Um, yeah. But you know, it's, it's a pretty solid sequence. Um, and I think actually the scene that follows it where they're on the boat and there's like the standoff where he's stalling and lighting the stick of dynamite. I thought that was just like a yeah. great scene, right? Yeah, I thought that was great. So great. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed them. I, I like the little kid. He's, he's, he's not you know short round, but I think he was he was pretty good. He's pretty fun. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff I, I didn't appreciate how much they set up. Like, because at the end when he starts flying the plane, I did get like brief Phantom Menace flashbacks where I was like, oh no. But... They do set him up a little bit, like he's he's learning how to fly a plane at the beginning. He's you know this. Yeah, he's got the little controls or whatever. He's, yeah, the yeah, little yeah. plastic controls or whatever. He's he's, he's Ask some up. guy about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, eh, yeah, good, good, good enough. It's fine, you know. And yeah, I thought the whole going into the tomb of Archimedes was great, and and that was you know yeah. sort of a, a classic sort of in yeah. doing some grave robbing uh, sequence puzzles that yeah have yeah. A puzzles the displacement thing i liked yeah that was cool and yes yeah, so the the finale was another thing like the the ending or like the beginning where i just was um a little bit worried when it started happening i think i had oh, really? tipped that there was some time travel aspect of this movie and mm. was concerned about that because when i hear time travel and in a franchise movie I always worry. It's like, are they going to go back into like the other movies? Are they going to do something where he meets his younger self? Something. My friend lame. was convinced they were going to go back through the other movies, and I was like, please, for the love of God. Yeah, I mean, I I liked. I honestly think they pulled it off in Endgame. Like that was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. But it's that's like a little bit of a different thing, and and um, I wouldn't have been happy if that was the case. 
and that scene also just like went on for a long time like the whole build up to the plane and everything i was just like jesus and then they they breach into you know this this battle and all the romans and i think i said to you is like we blasted like blazing saddles style into a ridley scott movie um <laughs> i was i was like oh jesus is this gonna be like complete schlock and i think it, it's schlock just to the but only to the point that it's enjoyable like I, I i think it's fun seeing boyd holbrook like trying to machine gun the guys and then they're getting shot down by these like uh you know the, the like medieval technology and it, and it fits honestly with the with a lot of these movies endings which is always like the bad guy is you know you fails to use the MacGuffin. you know they fail to to um, take advantage of the miracle that they're seeking and are brought down kind of by their own hand and i i just thought the whole and then so i'm watching and i'm going like okay this is kind of fun kind of a silly way to end the movie and it was like when when you have Indy on the beach like that meeting Archimedes and he's like, I don't want to I don't want to go yeah. back. That was like hit me, man. Like I totally I was like I was like destroyed by that moment because I like it It was like the whole movie clicked into place. And I understood what it was about. We didn't actually mention the whole thing with with um, where he talks about Mary and he talks about Mutt dying, which yeah. is like really good and like well acted scene. And, um, and And handled really well, I felt like. It wasn't. It wasn't like over the top melodramatic, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like, eh, check that box. It was like, no, this is a thing that messed messed them up, and he is definitely paying consequences for it. Yeah, yeah. And again, it, it was another one of these things where it's like, partly it's done for practical reasons because they can't bring back Shia LaBeouf, but it's <laughs> also it works in the movie because it's like I think if if he and some people were like, he's he's a father, kind of has a father daughter thing with um, Helena in the movie. Um, like why couldn't it have been Mutt in the same kind of role? It's like I don't think that really works as well because he wouldn't want to leave his son behind, you know. Like it, it, it just wouldn't. I don't think it, it would have worked. And also his sort of feeling of disapproval towards Helena, I think, works a little better. Not to mention, I think Phoebe Waller Bridge is, is a more fun screen presence than Shia LaBeouf. Sorry, Shia, but I thought it was a good way of doing it. And anyway, so th yeah, that whole ending it's like i got what the movie is about and it was and his sort of feeling of 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 dislocation and feeling you know alienated from the times i mean i i can understand it's a little bit it's a little bit out of step with the other indiana jones movies which are so especially the well really the fourth one too they're so like good spirits and like you know right off into the sunset and everything's sort of cheery and upbeat and i i can understand there's people who who are you know, don't want in an Indiana Jones that's a little more melancholy and a little bit more honestly like yeah. acknowledging the passage of time. But it's like if you're going to make a movie where he's an old man, I mean, like we have to be honest with ourselves, even if it's a silly franchise movie, your life when you're 80 is very different than your life when you're 40. And I think the honestly yeah. Mangled had a, did a pretty great job of making it still a fun like you're watching most of the movie and it's just like this fun adventure. But then also kind of weaving in these kind of ideas and these emotions into it without it it doesn't feel like a slog and it doesn't feel like this really somber thing um which logan is a little more somber like that but it again that the movie the, he he finds the balance also there between like it's this yeah. thrilling that it's a more muscular kind of action movie um while also having this kind of i mean what it's kind of like is like those like eastwood when he turned 60 and he started to make these movies where it was like kind of like I mean, Clint has been now for 30 years making the like, it's my last ride movie and he just keeps living. So he just has to keep making them. But it, it, he, he, he gives the Indiana Jones that kind of feeling. And I, I thought it really worked. Did you feel that when, when the, that part? Oh, of the no, movie definitely. Came? And I felt like, I'm, I'm, first, I'm going to make a joke, which is that I think it's cool that Mangle was able to make a movie about the casting of Harrison Ford in a movie about um, Indiana Jones. Um, because I feel like that was a little bit it was like he felt like he belonged Harrison Ford felt like he belonged back in the past in those old Indiana Jones movies and didn't really belong in the present and Phoebe Waller-Bridge is like this young enthusiastic person is like no 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 you you have a responsibility you you, you did these things and you have you have a place to go go to in the present and yeah the the uh no I think I think you know, like it was a, 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 a powerful statement about like 
are are you done with your life because you can no longer be an action hero or whatever um or or because something happened in the past and that's unchangeable or immutable or whatever and and yeah i was a little worried that that, that one of the things with time travel is you you know inevitably what happens with time travel is you go back in the past and you change something and then um um you know it doesn't change in the way that you want it to i mean this is this is now weird a weird trope in, in time travel movies um um you know the butterfly effect and ray bradbury and yeah i i i, uh, I felt like this was great because it didn't do that i was really worried that they were going to go back and he was going to convince mutt to not join or or figure out some way of yeah time fuckery fucking it up or they would jump around all the movies or they would go back and not kill hitler or like, by the way that's very funny that 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 mads mickelson who by the way is great in the movie his his plan was to go back and kill hitler because he could have done it better like that that was just very funny um i thought that was great yeah yeah and Matt, I, come on how much how much is how great is it just to see mads just chewing up scenery he's, and being Nazi? cool he's terrific but yeah, it's it was is, and I really thought that Phoebe Waller Bridge, the way she's playing those those last those scenes on the beach, and then um, at the end of the movie, are are really great because it's like she and, and Mangold like doesn't give a shit about the whole like time continuum or like using this like art. Can we you know like all the, the mechanics of it? It's just like he basically tosses off one line like, oh yeah, this we can't use the dial to go back to any kind of time. It was it was only going to go back here. It's, and, and it's sort of like his way of saying like, it's not important the, the 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 practicality of the thing is not important just like it is with the holy grail or any of this stuff it's not the thing itself is not what it's about it's just an excuse to get harrison for to get indiana jones into this time he's always imagined his entire life and also and as a connection i was going to make to the first movie he's not seduced by in the other movies the fortune and glory he doesn't need to look into the ark he knows He's not seduced by the miracles in those movies, but it's like they 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 find the miracle that he would be seduced by, and the thing he would be, um, and it's and it's sort of great that it's like she has to knock him out. She has she has to close his eyes after the first movie, him closing his eyes, and and bring him back to to the present because it's so appealing to him. And it, and I just I just love the way she played that because she sort of says it's like there's a time she, she's using the excuse of the time continuum and she's talking and she and again she's always sort of like has this sarcastic quality to her character but there's a real like emotional sense in her character of like what's what it really is is she doesn't she she needs him she's he's her father figure and and they need each other and I I just thought that was incredibly touching and then of course the ending of the movie with Marion. I thought was absolutely beautiful. I thought it was just perfect. Um, Somebody was cutting onions in my showing at that point. So, oh my um, god! No, I was like, had some red. stuff in my eye. Oh, but, um, yeah, just wrecked by that ending, <laughs> man. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe because I mean, it's not as much as I enjoy these other movies. This is not like a series where I'm walking out like, you know, sobbing like I just watched, you know. I don't know, it's a wonderful life or something which is actually it, it is a little it's kind of a capra-esque ending it's like you know your life doesn't have meaning but actually you know maybe it does and maybe you do have some kind of hope in the world um yeah. i thought it was i thought it was just beautiful so i thought it was too and i i, I uh yeah I, th I think one question i had for you was was okay so if this movie was sean connery older dr jones back in time and archimedes do you think young Indiana Jones would knock him out? Remember, and and to me, that answer is yes, absolutely. That's exactly what would happen. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think it's it is kind of a similar. It is a, it's yeah. a similar dynamic, and it's a similar kind of like you go. Through, they go through the whole movie being annoyed by each other, which is just like this is like the classic movie thing. It's like this is like goes back to like movies in the forties or whatever, and it's like you don't really, but really you do need the other person you need to, and it's, it's, and it's true for the, the father daughter dynamic. And yeah, it, it's, yeah, I, I, I could see him doing the same, doing the same with Sean Connery. That's funny just to imagine because yeah. Him and that movie I mean, it would be funny and sillier, but, but I do think I, 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 you know, like, honestly, I was like, is it plausible that you would, that a, that a younger Indiana Jones would do this, do this same thing that she is doing to him for him mm -hmm. with him? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, it's and it's I look, I, it's another one of these things where I think out of people who have 
if you read the synopsis of the movie and you're you're going in being like Kathleen Kennedy is giving us fr- feminist brainwashing, which I, by the way, I'm just completely baffled by this idea that like, I, it, to me, these are not. It's okay to have emotions. Therefore, it's terrible movie. Yeah, they're not. These are not particularly like feminist screed. All these Lucasfilm Disney movies, um, but if you were looking at it in that way, I guess I could see like you hear that out of context. Oh, she punches Indy in the face and you know brings him back without his consent. Consent. How horrible! But to me, it feels like in line with like when Short Round, Short Round literally like burns his stomach with fire, and he he says, "Doctor yeah. Jones, I love you. Like you need to wake up from this, basically." And it feels like it's it's, it's another version of that. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else about the movie? I don't want to keep you over your. Uh, yeah, I, I do have to go fairly soon, but I do want to share my my one thing that I thought was going to happen. So, in the beginning of the movie, they're on the train, right? And what the, the artifact that they're trying to get is the Spear of Longinus, and they get it, and Indy says it's a fake. So, what I thought was going to happen was that we would find out that the spear of Longinus was actually forged from the aluminum or whatever the hell was on that bomber that they flew back in time. And so that's why. Oh, you know, that's why it looked like it wasn't a real, you know, like it couldn't have been forged back then because obviously it was using this alloy that wasn't. Jesus Christ. That's, that's a very silly science fiction idea, but, but, uh, that was my uh, my uh, meta take on that. Um, that's actually yeah. that's really good. And yeah, they go, oh, it's, it can't be because this is German alloy. Wow, some, some alloy that winds up in in uh, yeah. Well, that's 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 actually I I like that. I mean, I guess it would have been a little too long winded for just what's a yeah. little red airing muffin in the beginning. But but that's that's fun. That's I I like the way you think, man. That's that's good. And I did like <laughs> the circularity with the watch and everything. I thought that was a nice little, you know kind of back to the future huh. thing i guess no and i mean i i, I guess yeah like with the antic antikythera I, i'm sure i'm pronouncing that right artifact that's like a cool like archaeological thing that we know is is real or whatever and that's way better to me than the than a crystal skull but the but but i like that that yeah there was there was that they made it a thematic thing that that, that you know you got to go back into history. Go go back. I mean, he's he's, he's teaching that battle right in the beginning. He's teaching in the beginning, yeah, yeah. Another thing I didn't pick up on, but yeah, that's 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 great. Yeah, um, that's so cool. By the way, I do like the crystal skull as a MacGuffin. I'm just gonna say, I, I the whole the how it pans out, I don't know, but I like it just as a physical and the mag magnetism and everything. Um, but anyway, before we before we leave, what what's your ranking for these movies? How would you how would what would be your Indiana Jones ranking? Uh, I'm still probably going to go, is it very boring? Sorry, but it's, it's Raiders, uh, uh, Last Crusade, Temple of Doom, uh, uh, Dial of Destiny, and then, um, Crystal, and then several pauses, ellipses, and then Crystal Skull. Yeah. I mean, honestly, fair. And I mean, I would, I think there is a big gap in between the, for those four and, and Crystal Skull. I mean, for me, obviously it's Last Crusade, big, I mean, there's some bias here, but I really do think like it's 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 the most interesting on a character level, most fun, whatever. Um, I guess it, it has to be Raiders for a second because you know whatever iconic and brilliant and and it's just like simple and great. For now, I'll say Temple of Doom, but I could see Dial Destiny. Maybe to me, to me, there's like different benefits to each because I think Dial Destiny has so much more like like character and emotion than temple even maybe even more than raiders honestly but um temple doom the filmmaking is just what puts it above i think in terms of you know you you just can't beat the the velocity and virtuosity of what spielberg's doing so i guess i go temple very close style of destiny and then a little bit but still like i king of the crystal skull worth seeing just for fun it's kind of just a kind of a just a goof i guess but yeah well I guess that's that. Um, I don't really have any sort of ending to this, but it's great uh, talking to you, Kurt. Um, yeah, great talking. Yeah, this is this is fun. Hope yeah. we didn't go on too long. And uh, yeah, this is I, I, I yeah, it, it's, it's interesting rewatching these and how much I realized I like love this character. I just loved you know. I mean, Harrison Ford is like such a part of our lives with so many of these movies, and um, 
he's just a delight and it's and uh, it's just really nice to see him go out on what i think i mean it's not a high for people in hollywood who are saying this is like the biggest <laughs> this is like an enormous bomb of a movie but on a creative level i think it's i think it's a high for him and a, and a nice nice way to close out the character and i i really hope they don't do any more with him I, if they just want to spin off with phoebe waller bridge that's okay but that's the perfect i think that's the perfect ending for him i feel like for, for his character particularly for indiana jones i feel like that 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 should be the punctuation mark i don't know if they do try it. we'll see what happens but yeah yeah i could see them you know they have a very good model cgi model of harrison ford now i could see them trying to eat out something like you just made my blood run cold when he said that kurt jesus and wow. now that they have guys generating all of their content ideas, it's going to be, yeah, uh, no, I'm, I, I, I definitely have uh, fears about all of that and about the future um, uh, based on that. But I do, I do feel like this was a good, a good finish line for, for Indiana Jones to get to. And I feel like, you know, like it's an, it's an emotional uh, climax. Um, I, I like we, we were talking about, you know, like it's, it's so silly honestly you know he's got the machine gun and he's shooting up roman so you know roman sailors and whatever like that's so ridiculous and at the same time you know like this the, there is this, these touching bits at the end with with archimedes and is indiana jones gonna be stay back in history it's, it's wonderful that, that that we got that that it wasn't that it didn't end with just machine gunning down roman yeah e- yeah either silliness or which which it's okay to have a little silliness because I think even even yeah. the most horrifying of these movies is is th- these are silly movies at their core, um, but it, it, he didn't go too far in that direction and he didn't go too far in the uh, things we know reference heavy thing either. It was just I don't know, yeah. really kind of the perfect way to do it. I think so. Props mm, to James Mangold. Yeah, I'm a little. That's all- I'm, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. That's the history that I want to remember. Is you know, like the, the, that's how it ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All what right. are you saying? Sorry. Oh no, I just saying props to James Mangold, and I and I, I'm a little uncertain about how Timothy Chalamet playing Bob Dylan is going to go. That's his next movie, but whatever. I got I've got season tickets for for James Mangold at this point. To me, he's 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 well, he one of my favorite working directors. I think so. I guess Chalamet's got the hair for it. I, don't know, I I hadn't heard that that was his next project. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I just saw him in the Wonka trailer. I'm like, eh, I don't know if he has the range for this sort of thing, but we can we can cross our fingers. And and I I was wrong to doubt James Mangold, so I'll I won't <laughs> doubt him this time. Um, but anyway, let's. Uh, I think we can we can uh, call it on this. We've been going on for a while, and uh, great talking to you, Kurt. Take care, man. Okay. See ya. Yeah.